hi and welcome back to my channel thank you so much for joining me today today we're going to be doing a video showcasing a brand new product to me we're going to be doing this together for the first time so let's head on over to my workbench and i'll show you what it is we're going to be working with all right let me show you what we're going to be working with today this is the lily moon moon dust milk paint i've never used milk paint on a video before so this is a first this is going to be one of the color choices. We've got this one here, which is a really light, beautiful, taupey color, or we have this gorgeous black. Which one should I use? I'm gonna surprise you. So you won't know what color I'm gonna use until we start mixing it up. I'm going to go through all the steps with milk paint, what is required. It is a little different, it's powder. So we're gonna have to mix it up, use some water, get the right consistency, and because I've never done this before, we're gonna do this together for the first time. Now, I am gonna do something a little different with my milk paint project. I'm gonna use another product. I personally don't do the chippy milk paint. Obviously, I've never even done a video on it. I don't sell it. It is not a huge seller in my area. However, you can use milk paint in a different way. So Let you me may be wondering why go through all the trouble to mix up the milk paint powder instead of just using a pre-done water-based acrylic paint well it's just a preference for one it does give you that option to get that chippy old world look now it also has a different finish you can seal it with hemp oil for a more natural finish so it's just going to depend on the look and style that you're trying to achieve. Let me also read you, because it's an added product to our video, about the gravity. Adding the gravity bonding agent when painting over a non-porous or previously finished painted piece of furniture, gravity will ensure adhesion and give you better control over chipping. So that's another reason. If you don't want a ton of chipping, you can use the gravity. We highly recommend to always use the gravity bonding agent on hand when using the moon dust milk paint. Milk paint is known for its unpredictability when not using the bonding agent. So there you have it. So they recommend using the bonding agent even if you're going for a chippy look. It can control the chippiness. And if that's something that you want to be in control of, I highly recommend adding this with this. So you may be wondering, how do I apply my milk paint? Well, you have different options. You can brush it, roll it, and you can even spray it. I do spray the majority of my work. However, for today's video, we're gonna give it a go with a brush and I'm gonna use my Zebra Palm Pro, which is actually part of my top coat trio, but I use this for paint all the time. It's a very versatile brush and it's one of my favorites. So we're gonna be using this one for the video. So we have everything we need. I do suggest having a little whisk on hand. You can use a stir stick as well, but the whisk is really gonna help. Um, I've got two measuring cups here because unfortunately I've run out of my mixing cups. I do highly suggest having some mixing cups. We've got our powder, our water, our mixing or measuring cups, our whisk, and our gravity. So we're ready to go. So you're going to want to mix how much you need according to your project size. We've got a small nightstand so I'm not going to be making up a whole lot of paint. I've turned my cup around so that I can see parts. So I'm gonna start with probably four parts of the powder because the way that you mix this is equal parts of, par of powder to water. I'm actually going with three parts of the powder to three parts of water. I think it's gonna be more than enough for our small project. This is warm water. I just went ahead and filled this up. It's not really crystal geyser. I have filled this up in the house with warm water. So now we're gonna go ahead and pour up to the number six line. And I'm gonna start mixing. So you're going to wanna use, like I said, if you can find a whisk, these small ones are great to have. You can order them right from Lily Moon Paint. And you're going to go ahead and start mixing up your paint. Now, what you will want to do is mix it up as well as you can. Let it sit for 10 minutes before mixing again. This will ensure that all of the pigments and ingredients are completely dissolved. That's the thing with milk paint. I do know this, even though I've never used it before. 
you definitely want to make sure that all of your powder has dissolved into the water. So I'm going to go ahead and keep mixing off camera. We'll be back in about 10 minutes after it's sat and then we'll start mixing again if we need to. Oh, and yes, I did go with the black. I'm gonna go ahead and add the gravity. It's been 10 minutes that this has been sitting and the ratio of gravity to milk paint is two to one. We have six ounces of milk paint in here, so I'll go ahead and add three ounces of the gravity. So we're gonna move on over to my work area in just a moment. I did go ahead after the 10 minute mark and mix up my paint again to make sure it was all mixed in really well. And it is, it's nice and smooth. But let me read you just a little bit more about the moon dust. So because the moon dust comes in powder form, you can control how thick or thin you make it. You can use it as you would regular paint. You can make it thinner for a wash or a stain or you can make it thicker if you wanna create more texture for your piece. We'll talk a little bit more about sealing the milk paint after our next step. Here's our piece here, this quaint little nightstand. I did take the drawer out because we're gonna do something different with that other than painting it. And I'll show you that at the end of the video. Now you may notice there is some gray primer on here. I did go ahead and use a little bit of primer to smooth out the areas where I went ahead and sanded down to bare wood. I had some pretty heavy scratches and gouges in the wood and I didn't want any difference in the texture of the piece. Since we're doing a full paint on this, I want everything to look really smooth. So once I sand it down to bare wood, it goes ahead and it changes the texture of the finish. So I spot primed. So here's the first coat on, and you saw me going over and smoothing it a little bit. First of all, it's very workable, which I really, really like. The thing I would like to tell you is, and you can see it right here at the top, those are a little bit of like, I would say like air bubbles or foaminess to the paint. Don't worry about that. That's what I was going back over and smoothing out. It is very well mixed, as you can see. There's no extra pigment, it's not gritty but because you mix it up so much with the whisk, it tends to aerate it a little bit, which puts a little bit of air in your paint, but you can smooth out those bubbles just like you saw me you doing. Go ahead and let this dry down and we'll come back to it as soon as it's done. So here are the rad pads and you can order these through Lily Moon Paint Direct. I'll put the link in the show notes, but you'd want to use like a very fine or super fine because you're not looking to remove your finish. You just want to smooth it out. Not sure if we're going to need these on our project today, but if we do, at least Let's I have. Let's take a look. This is the first coat dried down. Look how much coverage there is just with one coat. Let me flip you around the other side where we get a little more direct light and show you that side. other side where I get a little more light on this side of the shop. And I just want to show you how this came out. It looks really, really good. I'll get in really close so you can see, but it's very, very smooth. So our next coat should even all of this okay, out. We are back. I just got done with lunch. Before I headed off to lunch, I went ahead and did my second coat. I figured there was no reason to have you watch me do it again. Literally just repeating everything I did on the first coat and it came out so beautiful. It is so smooth. Two coats, this is done. I'm gonna kind of swing you around here so you can see. I do have one little spot there that is still drying. Other than that, this is pretty much ready to go. So I'm loving how this came out. All right, out. we are all ready now for our top coat. So you have a few choices. You've got hemp oil, the furniture bomb, or their Stellar Shield, which is their water-based low luster top coat. Which one do you think I'm going for? So now I'm gonna go ahead and start top coating this and I'm gonna use the water-based top coat Stellar Shield by Lily Moon Paint. I spray all of my top coats for the most beautiful finish. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I have to admit, I was half tempted to spray some of the milk paint, 
but I decided that it would be much better to stick with the brush because that's the way, the most common way that people do apply paint. Not everybody owns a paint sprayer. So I really wanted to showcase the product and how you brush it on. But now let's go ahead and get started with spraying on our top coat. Thank you so much for joining me today and thank you for being subscribers. If you aren't subscribed, make sure you go hit that subscription button as well as the post notification bell so you know when all of my latest videos are released. If you have any positive comments or questions, make sure you leave them down below as I love engaging with you and I'll always answer your questions. Thank you again and I'll catch you on the next video.